Hey everyone, it's Lynn from Vision Hair Extensions. Welcome to my video series. I'll be showing installation and removal of many different types of hair extensions. I hope you like them. In this instructional video, we will be demonstrating the beaded chain technique for attaching tied weft hair extensions and a full application of machine tied wefts using the beaded chain technique. All products seen in this video can be purchased from www.visionhairextensions.com. Links in the description down below. Our client has medium fine shoulder length hair and wants to increase the total length and volume. So a full pack of Q Indian machine tied wefts, color number four, will be perfect for the job. To attach the wefts, You'll need to follow a few steps. First, section the hair. Second, attach the beads using the beaded chain technique. Third, clip and cut the wefts to correct lengths. And finally, sew the wefts to the beaded chain. The wefts will be applied in three sections. The first row begins slightly behind the ear and goes under the occipital. The second row is made around one inch above the first row and starts just above the middle of the ear around one inch above the hairline. The third row is made about one inch above the second row and goes forward to within one to two inches of the temples. The first and second rows will have two layers of weft applied while the third layer will have only one layer, a total of five pieces. Please keep in mind that all wefts should be applied at least one inch away from the hairline for comfort and to keep the wefts unseen. Before you begin constructing your beaded chain, you'll want to prepare your loop pulling tool. Take some of your silicone micro rings and pour them out into your hand. Add up to 12 micro rings to the loop tool by squeezing the loop closed and fishing them on. We will begin applying the beads in our first section, approximately one inch behind the ear. For the first bead, make a rectangular section of hair around one half inch wide by one quarter inch tall. The first bead in the row on either side will have a slightly larger section of hair than the rest. Thicker hair can use a smaller section, while thinner hair could use slightly larger sections. Elevate the hair 45 degrees and towards the back. Hold it with your left hand. With your right hand holding the pulling tool, Grab the section of hair by putting two fingers through the loop and pulling it through, keeping the angle unchanged. Release the hair and grab the handle with your right hand. Grip the first bead on the loop with your left hand. Push the first bead up while pulling the loop tool down. The bead should now be sitting off base in the lower back corner with medium tension, but with some room between the bead and the scalp. With your left hand, grip the strand while keeping the bead in position. With your right hand, grab the pliers and flatten the bead so that it is parallel with the head. Before you flatten, you can adjust the bead position. After you flatten the bead, if you aren't happy with the position of your bead, you can adjust the position and tightness by unsqueezing and reflattening. With the first bead completed, make the section for your next bead, one quarter inch wide and one quarter inch tall. Grab the hair from the first section along with the new section and elevate 45 degrees and back with your left hand. Now follow the same procedure from the first bead. Loop, pull, and flatten the bead. Again, off base and in the lower back corner of the section. 
Continue creating the beaded chain in the same way you did for the second bead, but only including half of the previous hair in the new section. When you reach the middle of the head, switch to the other side. Optionally, when you finish the other side, you can attach a middle link between the two end links. With your beaded chain finished on the first section, grab your machine weft and position it to where you want it to sit on the head. The top of the weft should cover the entire beaded chain. The beginning of the weft should cover the first bead. Clip the beginning of the weft once it's in position at the beginning of the beaded chain. Wrap the weft around the back of the head along the section. Clip the weft into position and cut it to size. If you're doing a second weft on the section, repeat the same process as with the first with additional clips. Before you begin your application, you'll need to prepare your needle. Thread your curved needle by pulling it halfway through so that the thread is doubled up. Tie a knot at the end to secure it. Be sure to use at least two wingspans worth of length for each row, around 10 to 12 feet. Now, you're ready to start sewing. For your first stitch, go up and between the first and second beads. Before pulling all the way through, feed the needle through the loop at the end. This will lock the thread. Next, hold the thread up towards the head and stitch right behind the first bead. When you pull it through, stay underneath the thread that you're holding up. You'll be using this technique known as the blanket stitch throughout the rest of this sewing. Now we'll do another blanket stitch in front of the first bead. Make sure the thread doesn't slide off the end of the weft. We'll add one more stitch in front of the first bead. In order to lock in the forward stitch, do a downward stitch starting in front of the first bead, angled so that it goes behind that bead and exits between the first and second beads. Now begin sewing in the opposite direction along the weft using the blanket stitch. Be sure you're always sewing behind a chained hair or a bead, and make sure that the stitches are around three quarters of an inch apart from each other.
Once you've reached the end of the weft, you'll make a pattern just like at the start. Two stitches between the first and second beads, then two stitches in front of the first bead. Hold the thread upwards towards the head and do an angled stitch, starting from in front of the first bead, behind the first bead, and exiting between the first and second. To finish off the sewing, stitch back the opposite way two or three more times, keeping the final stitch loose. Cut the threads and push one end through the loosened final stitch. Pull both the threads to tighten the stitch. Knot the strings two or three times together to finish off the weft. Leave an inch or two at the ends of the thread. This is to keep them from poking out or untying. If you enjoyed this tutorial, let us know in the comments any other hair extension videos you'd like to see. Be sure to subscribe for future hair extension tutorials and visit www.visionhairextensions.com to purchase all the materials used in this video and much, much more. Thanks for watching.